they're producing these things that are elastane and polyurethane and nylons and all of that stuff. These things have been shown to, listen, your skin is your body. It's been shown and now you're using it, you're sweating on it, it's, it's on your you know, genitalia. And these things are, are taking in those endocrine disruptors and it shows links to endometriosis and infertility and endocrine disruption. Again, if you're putting, knowingly putting plastics and phthalates and petroleum derivatives on your body and then you work out in it. So your body heats up, has the propensity to receive more. What happens when you put tea in a hot liquid? Pulls in, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the beauty of getting compounds from heat, right? It pulls in, so transdermally, it increases your viability of taking in more of these chemicals. Same thing. So I have one of my dearest friends on today, Darren Olean. That's how I pronounce your name. Is that okay? That's close to the Nor Norwegian pronunciation. We used to call it, we used to use Olean, but we t still... Do people call you Darren Olean? I yeah. always say Olean. I know, that's not and the You never correct. correct me, so... I know, it's funny. But but the, the <laughs> hilarious the, the original it's Ulian was the Norwegian way of saying it. Oh, what do you prefer? I don't know. Whatever comes out. Okay, well that's what comes out. <laughs> Darren Olian, it is then. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is gonna be a, a very interesting, fun <laughs> podcast because I can literally uh, recite this entire book because I I feel like I live it with you. But his new book is called Fatal Conveniences: The Toxic Products and Harmful Habits <clears throat> That Are Making You Sick and the simple changes that will save your health. It sounds so doom and gloom, mm. um, but yet I have to say it, it's, it's information that I really believe everyone needs to know mm. to really optimize and change their health for the better, which is why before you even go into it, I truly believe this is gonna be a massive hit because people need to hear this information mm. and people will want their family and friends mm. to read it. Mm. Is that like what, what made you read it, even though I know you live this day to day too? Yeah, well, it, you know, nothing changes if nothing changes. And so much of this is invisible, right? So if, if we don't acknowledge what's in our environment, uh, and we definitely know hundreds and hundreds and thousands of studies on all of this stuff that I'm mentioning in here, this is affecting our biology. This is affecting our environment. This is affecting our air. This is affecting our water. This is affecting our pets. This is affecting our children. These are affecting our food. This is affecting the water. This is affecting the soil. This, you know, so it's, 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 it's all over the place. So yeah, I mean, did I want to have to write this book? No, I was compelled to. Because, you know, you've hung out with me long enough that I, I like to kind of deal with things honestly, mm -hmm. straightforward, and similar to relationships. If I have to say something, even though it's uncomfortable, even though I don't want to, I kind of have to, right? And so that's the liberation of possibilities when you're actually willing to go into there. So the same, it's the same philosophy that I have with this. I saw my father suffering as in the 90s, right? So he was suffering from chemical sensitivity. And you're like, what? What's going on? It's invisible. You can't understand it. Like, but he, clearly he was being affected. So, you know, cut to 30 years later, I'm learning more and more along the way. And you come to f realize that, that products that should be safe um, aren't necessarily safe. Uh, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands, literally 60 to 80,000 chemicals that are just created every year. It's thrown into our environment and they only deal with it, relatively speaking, when it becomes overwhelmingly necessary, when it causes a problem. This is not, this is not the, 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 the plan to take on society. You don't just throw chemicals into a bunch of your personal care and beauty and and children's products and and clothing and, and then go hey it's just small enough it's not going to cause any problems the problem is all of this stuff combined are 
are undercutting the very fabric mm -hmm. of our literal existence. And I don't even mean to be dramatic. Yeah. Literally, our men's testosterone, women's testosterone is plummeting, right? Uh, infertility is, it, we're sprinting toward the demise of even being able to produce normally between people having sex and having it viable, right? So our motility of sperm and sperm count is completely, you know, we're sprinting towards disaster. And there's a lot of great books and researchers that have, that I've been inspired by, uh, that I've uh, used for this book to give context. If so this is real data, real science, uh, that's showing a lot of this stuff. So, um, so again, uh, I want to deal with these things honestly, so that people can actually have the opportunity to have a great life, to to not be a victim of something you and I and all of us have been born into. Mm -hmm. We've been born into this thing that was going on well before uh, we got here. And, and, and now it's just growing. It's a growing problem. You know, you, you, you look at 1972 and they finally decided to ban DDT, right? Uh, blasting all of our, our food and, and, and food production with DDT. Well, guess, guess what's in the blood of most of us right now? And they banned it in 72, DDT. And then we're still, we're finding this in, in the, the PFAS chemicals, the derivatives of Teflon. It's the same thing. It's showing up in all of our blood. And so it, it, th this is not okay. Uh, and I didn't want to, and I don't want to wait around for someone out there or some organization or some government agency that I thought we're supposed to regulate this stuff that is not doing a very effective job. So, um, you know, ultimately underneath all of this, I want to bring out the invisible to make it visible mm -hmm. in terms of like the information and then go, okay, uh, I'm looking at the back of this package and it has fragrances in there, usually hidden by some proprietary, you know, right. loophole. Um, so they're not disclosing, disclosing hundreds of chemicals. Largely, a lot of it are hor hormonal deregulation um, disruptors. Disruptors. So, so this is the, this is the this is the this is the opportunity. And again, I can really break it down to like, if I were to show you something that's dangerous to use, but then I can just show you over here, use this or do it this way. It's, it's that simple. And I, you know, the last third of the book is, is all solutions. It's to, to, it's to go like, Hey man, if, if, uh, if I can eat poison or eat this fresh fruit and veggies or whatever, just from a garden, your common sense will tell you, yeah, I'm probably going to eat that rather than knowingly eat poison right? Or chemicals or ultra process something. Um, so that's what I want to raise. I want to raise the attention so we can intend something different, right? So we have the knowledge at least starting to, this is a, this is a, this is a, 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 to, a toe in the water. That's what's amazing to me. I remember when we did my uh, book launch party at Barnes and Noble. Remember, and and we talked about this a little bit. Someone asked a question on the panel. You're about, Darren was one of the people on my panel. I brought like three of my good friends. He was one of them. Emily, sex with Emily was the other. Max Lugavere was the other. And uh, when you were talking and like you said something about you, you used one of the things that you talked about was a fatal convenience. The audience, because like a lot, like a lot of people were there. It was like. People were like in awe no. and it was after the fact, I got so many DMs and messages about, I can't believe he said that. Oh my God, I didn't know it. Like it disrupted mm -hmm. the entire like, uh, dynamic, I guess, of the room because mm -hmm. people were so like, like, I guess, I don't know if it was like, just like shocked or nervous or, mm -hmm. and I want to bring it up. So in the book, and what I, what I also want to say, what Darren does very nicely is he doesn't just tell you about all the problems, but you do give people the solution. Mm -hmm. So this is not just about like, 
you know, we are all going to die in by 2025. It's like, here, here is what's happening. Uh, and here's how you can like fix it. And here's a solution. It's not just like, blah, this is terrible. Uh, the EMFs, let's talk about EMFs because mm. all of us are, uh, very much affected by it. Like mm. air, air buds or like your, you know, ear, ear Bluetooth buds. Bluetooth and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bluetooth <clears throat> is a big one. Yeah. Um, it's a huge, it's a huge hormone disruptor, mm -hmm. right? It, some, it, it, I want you to talk about it for your brain. Uh, also how bad are people, how bad are air buds to listen to and EMFs overall? Yeah, I mean, this is a big chapter to Huge the point chapter. to the point where it could have been a, a, a volumes of books. There's so much data, all, all the way dating back to even electronics and and turning on the first telegraph. We knew that when you you know electricity is amazing um, because it allows us to turn on the lights and use things. And but every even electricity, even in wires, it, it has frequency and it has electromagnetic fields. And these things, they've known that uh, uh, unregulated or misgrounded even electricity um, in electromagnetic fields is connected to leukemia. Well, there's a lot of studies, um, too many to even call out, on child, uh, children in proximity to high amounts of electromagnetic fields that are contributive to leukemia. So it's like, and, and, and other types of uh, uh, cancers as well. So, you know, this is a topic where people can get really kind of roll their eyes. But if you start digging into the research, if you start looking at it, um, you, you'll quickly realize that that it, it, it's um, it was funny because I was just talking to the owner of uh, Tech Wellness this morning and she's who was chemical sensitive or chemical sensitive and electro sensitive. So sensitive more, there's, there's, there's about, I think the stat is, um, there's a, f a f maybe seven to 10% of the Americans are deemed, uh, electro sensitive. So people are physically can't, they can't sit in this room like you and I, right. And there's and like my father suffered. He couldn't sit in this room for other things for, for, you know, uh, formaldehydes and phthalates and, and colors coming off of thing or cleaning products. So my dad suffered from that. The, the, the interesting thing is, um, so, so August from tech wellness was describing how sh she couldn't live in society because of this invisible electromagnetic, uh, radiation that's all around us. So she developed a company that was then helping to contribute to lowering the amount of invisible radiation that's affecting all of us. So, so when it is that noticeable for someone, they are debilitated, right? Um, so then you have to go into other things. The thing is, even though you're not being affected, even though I'm not feeling like I am, you're still biologic, you're still chemical, you're still physical. I just like the shampoo, just like the lotions, they're still causing you hormone disruption. So that's the interesting thing. And we don't know it. Right. And we Is don't it because know. it's happening so slowly? And it's, it's slowly and it's continuous. And like some of these things are, you know, the half-life of some of the chemicals are like a few hours, the phthalates and the parabens, which are in everything right um but then you have the forever chemicals the pfoses and stuff which bioaccumulate they can get into the fat tissue and stay there which is also interesting because the and they, they're calling this term obesogens which then then create a scenario metabolically that it's shifting your ability to actually release weight because there's a toxic load attached to that and buried into the fat tissue. So that's a whole nother thing. A whole nother thing. What is before? Then tell me what is. Where do we find those? Like, in what products would we find that? Everything. Name me three. Yeah. So your your lotions, your makeup, your shampoo and conditioner, your body wash. Mm. Um, like personal hygiene. Yeah. All your, you, so many of your personal hygiene stuff. So parabens and phthalates, all of those things you'll, you'll find, which I tried to, in the book, I, I, I went into themes. So I had a whole theme of a whole chapter 
to fragrances. Yeah. Because fragrances alone have a subset of loopholes around that. So then they can bury all of these uh, toxic ingredients within and quote unquote a, a, a protective IP of the company, which is just a lobbyist way of loopholing it so they can do what they want. So, um, <clears throat> but back to the EMFs, um, the, the, the quick summary on this, because it's so complex, uh, we, from knowing that these electromagnetic fields are dangerous, then telecommunications obviously came in, they created 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. All of the one, two, three, four are still here. They're not going away because we transitioned to 5G. Mm. All that really means very simplistically is we've just added now more to it, infinitely more, because from a 5G, it's a, it's a millimeter wave. So there's a diff, these are different millimeter waves, which doesn't allow them to travel as far. So therefore you need to, by at least 10 times, put up more towers in the environment for 5G to exist. So and, what does that mean? But wait, so we still have all the other towers from one, two, three, yeah. four. So that yeah. is... So it's pollute. Think of it... It's getting of, exponentially more... Pollution. Pollution and yeah. also toxic for your yeah, body. Exactly. So it puts oh. you under a lot of stress. So many studies uh, point to a few things, which is weird because it represents things that um, are almost chemical. They come into the same categories, right? So the EMF exposure, it shows that it puts the immune system under stress for sure. Okay. It increases free radical oxygen species, so free radicals. So that's, that's why we need antioxidants when the free radicals, they run crazy on a cellular level and they create inflammation, damage, et cetera. So we're creating more of those just being in these, you know, these fields all the time. Right. And then there's some scary things that, um, w which was, I didn't realize the alarming nature of this. <clears throat> the brain has got a blood brain barrier similar to the, even the gut, right? And the gut opens up from exposure to antibiotics or glyphosate or whatever, you know, undigested or uh, material that should not be in the bloodstream gets in the bloodstream and causes all kinds of problems. The blood brain barrier is even more intense. You do not want things that are not supposed to be in the brain. And what they started to show was these proteins called albumins um, that it was opening up these channels in the blood brain barrier, allowing albumins, uh, to, to travel into the brain that aren't supposed to be there. So they create damage that way. So, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> same thing, you're showing, showing more endocrine disruption mm -hmm. from the electromagnetic fields and you're showing testosterone. So, so think of it to, as, so in summary, think of EMFs as pollution that you can't see. It's, it's similar to the playbook of smoking. At least smoking, you were like seeing someone do something, you're seeing the smoke, you could smell the smoke, and you're like, ooh, I gotta stay away from that. I don't wanna be secondhand taking any of that in. But we can't see it, we can't smell it, we don't, we can't put our finger right. on it. Right, it That's, seems intangible. Yeah, but it shows up in an in infinite amount of studies. So think of your device. And I was saying throw away your device, but use precautionary things when you're using it, common sense. Even Apple started coming out saying, yeah, well, uh, distance, you know, don't put these things close to you. Right. So, so you're actually not supposed, fine print shows on every device, you're not supposed to put it up to your head. It's supposed to be nine inches or, or further away of your head. Right. And, and who, who, who's doing that, right? And kids and the brain imaging of these microwave radiation of kids are infinitely more susceptible because their immune system and their and the thickness of their skin. So this this EMF radiation is going all the way through their 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 brains. <clears throat> so that's a danger, right? So that's think of it as pollution that we're exposing because it's here. Mm -hmm. So okay, with the phone, for example, what do we do? 
don't put a phone, don't put it up to your head anymore. Okay. Right. Find a space where you can take a take a call on a speaker, or plug back in. Right. Well, plug- talk about how the headset, or sorry, the earbuds. Because you're putting them right into your ears, where yeah. close to your brain, they're sa- most people are like, "Oh yeah, that's it's safe," right. but you won't use them. No, I won't use them no, no. unless I I only listen. I only do it when I'm I'm working out for one hour versus like you know it's mm-hmm. that's my all day where a lot yeah of these then people. my all day thing. But what are sh- what, how does it show up? Is that do you get? I know that they talk about it does lower your testosterone. Yeah. What else? Like, give me some yeah, like, yeah. That, ta- that, tangible that, things it does. That's the the lower testosterone creates uh, hormone disruption for females and and males, okay. right? Um, and then again, the free radical oxygen, so it's creating more free radicals in your body. Can it cause and brain cancer? Yeah. So gy- gylomas um, uh, show up a lot, and this has been studied for a very long time. So people with it up to their head and a researcher was telling me this 20 years ago where because you think of the body as electric Mm -hmm. right which it is um it's disrupting the pattern of rna and dna uh uh, and very clear in this the research showing that senescence when cells are naturally replacing themselves all the time it disrupts the body's ability to discard cells that are naturally dying when that happens you're creating a different micro environment you have now dead cells that the body is confused on getting rid of so that is leading to environmental micro issues that potentially are creating these these areas of carcinogenic activity so a lot of research around gylomas and people just with these things up to the head all the time so the, these, this is nothing to, and the, and the, you know, the FCC is is just failed completely, miserably at its job because it's twenty years old. You think of if you would do an audit on a regulatory uh, system or any business of, of if it's their business to understand the evolution of cell phones or technology or electronics and you were to say wait a minute you're still using your regulatory standards that were 20 years that are 20 years old when technology is advancing so fast why would you be doing that why haven't you updated what those frequencies what the electromagnetic and so they're using they're all they're using is proximal heat so this uh, state of en- energy um, regulation. So it's like, hey, if it's close to you, it burns you. That that's the regulation. They're not talking about the electromagnetic fields or the frequencies or the types of frequencies that come off these things, which clearly shows in the in the research that this is causing infertilities and testosterone and gylomas and all that stuff. And, you know, in 93 to 94, the EPA was actually doing a lot of studies finding it out issues on cell phones. And then, you know, it, it, they lost some funding. And then all of the regulations that the EPA was doing on the, which fell in their lap to do this protection for us, it went into the FCC. And the FCC didn't say anything about what the EPA was finding in terms of the telecommunication. And then they just said, well, if it's, it's, it's thermal heat. That's the only regulation we're going to give to it. And so it just makes no sense whatsoever. So do you, what is your, so your solution would be. So, so just to answer the, 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 the earbud thing. Yes, um, please. It, it's the same frequency of the phone, just less of it. intensity, less kind of amplitude of, of energy going through it. So and, it's and, better to use the AirBuds than put the phone towards your ear. Yes. But it's still it's still disruptive. Think of, it, think of it. You're still knowingly putting yes, call exactly. it pollution. You're knowingly causing pollution in the cranium of your head. So man, it's not you don't have to fight against it. Just just plug back in. 
And how much does it, by you using those, uh, the one, the, the headphones that you plug in, how much do you know the exact amount of how much better it is? Like it, it's 50% better. It's 20% better. Do you know better the, in terms of what? Then using the earbud, like the earbuds. Yeah, well, you're not getting exposed to that. So it's just, r- it's a hundred percent better basically. Yeah. The, the, there's, there's, which is even the best ones. There's air tubes. So there's a line with an air tube and you can still see it. And that's what I use. So I put earphones in with an air tube. It doesn't allow the, the electromagnetic, any electromagnetic field to come through that air tube. Where'd you get them? Oh, they're just tech wellness has, uh, has Why a Why didn't bunch. you ever sh- show them to me before? I can only give you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> or else you just can... Well, that's a good one, though. Don't you want to save my life? I would think you would. I do. I just told you. You just did. And you told you, I hope you, a few other people. The student is now ready. Yeah, exactly. You, you, <laughs> that's right. You finally exactly. asked the question. That's a really, it's a good point. <sighs> so, because uh, that one is the one that I think is very, uh, I think everyone, it's very general. And everyone can kind of understand that one because everyone uses a phone, right? You won't put the phone in your pocket. No. Nothing. Like even just now when I had the phone beside me on I my just, chair, you're like, put the phone away. I mean, yeah, put it away. You, you don't need it on you. And if it is on you, turn it off or on airplane mode. On airplane. How much does it say? How much does it save you in terms of the radiation even from when you put it on, on airplane mode? It's hard to tell. I mean, you can, it, you, you, it's hard to measure because it fluctuates all the time. The phone is constantly getting like, signals, ping, pinging. And so the, the lower bars you have, the harder your phone is working. So when you're, especially when you barely have signal, your phone is constant because it's constantly looking for that, that for connection. A, yeah, for a connection. Right. Well, that, this goes to, and you'll, be, you'll notice that I'm not wearing my watch, my uh, Apple watch today because yeah. I knew you were coming. Uh, you won't wear any of these devices like sleep devices, watches, because you know it's funny because now that, you know, we're friends. I see like the green light underneath, like that clearly can't be good to be right on your skin. 24 right on your hours. Pulse point. Pu- yeah. Right on your pulse point. I was going to say all day. I mean, that oh. cannot be good for you. And yeah. people now with technology, I mean, people are wearing so many devices, not only are they wearing the headset, the earphones, all earbuds all day, but they're wearing the sleep trackers and the, yeah. you know, the, fo- the, the, the watches and everything like yeah. Are we just like giving ourselves cancer so, like like 20 years maybe prior to when we would? Like what is happening? Yeah, I mean, just think of it in terms of stress. It's stress. We're just causing this is these are these are polarized energy fields in the in the in the environment it's non-polarized, right? We think of it in terms of like if I polarize the sun, that would be like taking a magnifying glass and then using having the sun yes. hit it and then I can burn something. Yeah. Think of that. That's that's polarization. That's the kind of energy that we created that's non biologically assimilative that is pointing to that phone to make it work. So that's the polarizing energy is very disharmoning for us. What's so interesting is the irony, right? Because these are all devices and things to try to optimize our health. The trackers, our, and everything, stuff, yeah. all the trackers yeah. and like productivity of our life right now. Cause everything right now I feel, and you probably agree, it's very trendy and hashtag worthy to, to be like wellness and productivity mm. and all of these things. But yet the ways that people are getting there are actually the, is the opposite. It's the antithesis. It's like yeah. very harmful, yeah. right? With doing all of these things because it's giving off so much other stuff. Um, so what would be your solution to people? Would they, should they just not use sleep trackers? Should they not use the, the Apple watches? I, mean, they... I, can't, I, I don't give advice. Like I'm just I, I'm, supply, I'm, I'm, supply some supply information. Supply some solutions. I wouldn't use, for me, I don't use anything. It's I know. Like Look we, at... we know how to sleep. We know how to, you know, listen. Follow the circadian. Go to back to nature. Start there first before you start needing to track. As I guarantee, whether you had a freaking tracker or not, like I could just say, well, what are you doing? Like, oh, I'm working on that. I'm gonna stay on my phone. I'm staying up all night. I'm blah, blah, blah. So I should, I should figure out how bad I'm sleeping. You're sleeping bad. Yeah, <laughs> I know. The Be- irony is, isn't the stress of just trying to figure out all this shit yeah. making you more stressed out and sleeping less? So use your it's, common sense. No one has common sense is not that common. We, right. you know that. Right. 
but it's a hundred percent true. And let me say this because <laughs> I know Darren and he is as real and as authentic as they come. He's not just bullshitting. He's not just writing a book and just spewing out nonsense. You literally practice what you preach. You live by this 24. I see he lives in a yurt for God's sakes, and he does not wear any trackers and he will not drink out of this plastic bottle. I mean, everything you do is so true to who you are. What you say is who you are. And he is as honest as they come. I know it. Um, and if you see him, you're not wearing one tracker. You are like, you are like, you look like the epitome of health. That's probably mostly genetics, but that's whatever you'll oh. say it's not but uh, i've been working out all my life i know he gets mad when i say a lot that of plants all my <laughs> he, life he eats a everyone's lot of plants. perfect no in their own just like let's express our own perfection no, instead but, of getting the crap beat out of us by stupid systems but what i love is the fact that we're talking about common sense right mm. like people are wearing 77 people come to my house and they're wearing 77 different trackers they're wearing the rings the watches the and two watches sometimes and they have the trackers everywhere on their bodies the, the, the glucose levels and all of this stuff at the end of the day is, and, and, and they're all like attached to their phones right because of the you get the information mm. to your phone and you're saying that all of those things are just they are harmful. Well, listen, uh, they are, you know, they, there are, there are lower levels of energy for sure. If you want to use them and gather some data, but then 24 seven and all of this stuff, it's a little overboard. Just if you're literally lost and you need some data points, I'm not saying like, right. don't, don't use it, get some data points, whatever. Don't make it a big deal. It's like, th this is a journey. I'm not perfect all the time. I got to get on a plane. I get the crappy out of me with radiation, but I also use the best I can. I've got, you know, silver EMF protection clothing. I'm doing, I'm mitigating. I never go in the, the TSA scanner I'm glad, ever. I'm so glad that you said that. You know that my mom told me never to go into that TSA scanner. She told me this. 25 years ago yeah. and everyone laughed at her and me and they're like your mom is so overprotective she's so crazy why is she saying this even today i still don't go through those things yeah. and people you know laugh at me still to this day can we talk about those uh, scanners a little bit yeah i mean uh, I, I mean i the 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 information on this is so buried so buried. That's yeah. why I want you to bring it to life. And I really, I, I, I tried, I really tried to find as much as I possible. But the funny thing is all of these, what I found was of all these, there was no real strong data to show that it was harmful. I just found all of these people saying the same thing going, Oh, it's non ionizing. It's fine. We used to have x-rays, which was ionizing and killing people. Like we, so we stopped that. And then you keep digging and they're, they're saying the same script in a certain sense. I'm like, listen, this is, this is again, people are making this weird argument because they haven't looked enough. Ionizing radiation clearly is DNA fucking damaging and ripping apart, right? Those are x-rays. We know that. That's on the farther spectrum. And then as you come up the spectrum, it moves into non-ionizing. It goes into UVA, UVB. It goes into microwave, all of that stuff. It also goes in the, in the extremely low frequency, which is what we were talking about with the, the Fitbits. Mm -hmm. This is ex called extremely low frequencies. But now they're starting to find this constant exposure uh, is, again, stress. And there's also showing that uh, there's a great book called um, Open Something, Dr. Shanna, it'll come to me, a great book where she epidemiologically is looking at this. And this is starting to cause epidemiological effects into the next generation from extremely mm. low non-ionizing radiation because what's happening is what people don't want just because acutely it's not ripping the dna apart right that over time the stress that i talked about before just spending like half of the podcast on emfs but i know because <laughs> uh, uh, this is by the way this is one chapter right? i know this is just right? seriously like this is I, I, so 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 just to finish that point the the extremely low EMFs is causing stress 
on the DNA, on the cells, creating and it's showing up in motility. Listen, that is how we move the human race forward. Mm -hmm. If you are hurting something that's stopping and, and thwarting the human race from moving forward, it's probably not a good thing. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to realize right. that is from the data showing that that's happening. So I am not a fan of saying, as long as it's non-ionizing, it's fine. It's not fine. The data doesn't support that. It's, and it's persistent, which is this whole book. These things are cumulative, right? These are constantly coming. These are a body burden that continue to, to add up on top of each other. This is why it's dangerous. It's we can't get it, you know, listen, the phthalates, the parabens, all of this stuff in our personal care, our shampoos, our conditioners, our makeup, all that stuff. Those have half-lives. And that's true. Mm -hmm. they, they come in out of the body, the body metabolizes them, going, oh, get that out. Yeah. But then with this other forever chemicals, it's got, it d doesn't want to leave. The problem is you put the lotion on and that half-life is a few hours, but you just already started with the shampoos and that half-life. And so now you're layering on top. Now you're putting the makeup on and all that stuff, but now you're putting the clothes on and then you wash the clothes in a certain laundry detergent that had all those other uh, chemicals in there too. So now you've added layers and layers and layers of parabens and phthalates and PFOS and fragrances and all of this stuff. And then you're coming home and then what's in your home? What's the cleaning products in your home? What's what's the stain that they use? What's the fire retardant in the thing? So again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to freak people out. But, 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 but if we can lessen the cumulative load, load yeah. that's how we get better. Just and get even if we can get even 1% better and healthy or 2%, it, it all makes a difference. It all makes a difference. Okay, so <laughs> moving on from the EMFs, <laughs> let's talk about spandex because every girl and I know, including me now, especially mm. with athletic leisure being the most popular way people, women, girls are dressing now, that's even a fatal convenience. Yep. Tell us why. Well, what do you think spandex is made of? I it's, want you to say it because you're the expert. Right. So, so spandex is EMS. a derivative of petroleum. <laughs> it's EMS. <laughs> Duh. It materialized out of nowhere. Um, what is it? So what, sorry. It's petroleum. Say right. So plastics, nylons, elastane, the thing that makes it stretchy. That's petroleum. Right. So these are polyurethane. These are lab created petroleum-based, non-regulated chemicals. And you know how many chemicals it took to, to make that? So like our so lemons and aloe and all that? I mean, I don't call out any companies in the, in the thing, but they're, if they're producing these things that are elastane and polyurethane and, and um, nylons and all of that stuff, Yes, the, these things have been shown to, listen, your skin is your body. It's been shown, and now you're using it, you're sweating on it, it's, it's on your you know, genitalia, and these things are, are taking in those endocrine disruptors, and it shows links to endometriosis and infertility and endocrine disruption. Again, it's po you're putting, knowingly putting plastics and phthalates and petroleum derivatives on your body and then you work out in it so your body heats up has the propensity to receive more what happens when you put tea in a hot liquid it pulls in mm -hmm. right that's that's the beauty of getting compounds from heat right it pulls in so transdermally it increases your viability of taking in more of these chemicals same thing with wrapping your food uh, especially warm food and plastics. It we know this without a doubt. This is not anything other than real data. Real data shows that your that the food has phthalates in it. Real data showing this is connected to potential uh, kidney problems, kidney disease. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the? Oh man, what's the? Uh, forget I lost my train of thought but so so th these kinds of things are causing um, again more and more stress and we're looking for form fitting now is there is there better alternatives yes 
more and more are happening. Is it fast enough? No. I wish some of these other companies would kind of make these changes because what's going to happen is, and the, here's the name of the game. The name of the game is we put pressure on them. Then when it becomes overwhelming, mm -hmm. then they make a change. But until then, no one does anything. Right. So they, so, so again, unregulated mm -hmm. or very little regulated, mm -hmm. uh, loopholes. And then when it gets overwhelming by us saying, Hey man, I don't want to put that on my body anymore. Then, then, then a change happens or right. potentially a change happens. So can we, how about cotton? Would it be better to work out in cotton, like basic cotton or polyester without po spandex? Po polyester. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just making up like a, yeah, polyester is a chemical. I know I'm saying co yeah. like cotton, cotton. So maybe better, but organic cotton, the best. Or, or, or other silk or hemp or things like that. And they're doing incredible with weaves. Um, but do they look okay? I mean, there's two things, right? Let's talk, like, let's talk realistic, okay? Because how much do these things cost for these solutions? Because silk would be extra, really expensive to work But then you're not of. buying Organic 700 cotton. of them. Okay, so I mean, let's how, talk about how it. Many, how, many different, how many do you have? How many different spandex outfits do you have? A lot. Because yeah, how I, many? Work, I work how many? out... How many? Uh, a lot. Uh, 10, 12, 15. I don't know a lot because I'll tell you, you why. Probably have 30. I probably have like a hundred, but I wanted to sound a little bit less, you know, bougie. So, so what but if, that's only because this is what I do. For, I, I, I work out a lot. I live in them. I don't wear, I, this is basically the way I live in. I don't wear fancy clothes. So think about clothes. that. I don't so, wear So then you're like living that. in them too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but, but that, what I, why I'm bringing this up is I'm not alone. Most girls, women I know, they live in their yeah. spat. They live in their yeah, yeah. like, in their workout clothes. Yeah. You know that's what we do now. That's and it's become like the thing to do. Like no one's really wearing jeans and fancy clothes anymore. So I have a lot of pairs, and plus it's what I do. I love to work out. So I'm actually have probably more than the than the average bear. So I'm not, and and, and even if not, like. To, to have to, to work out in silk or hemp. Well, how about it shorts? How about some cute little shorts and you don't have to put all this other stuff on? That's a good option. I'm just yeah, saying, like, some that's good. good, cute, healthy shorts, and you don't have to always put the freaking spandex on. But it's better for your skin anyway. 100%. But I'm right? saying, like, we want to be, like, that's a great alternative. I'm, I'm saying, like, some of these alternatives. So could here, they be here's my if, if the solutions haven't caught up to everything, maybe, right? right? There's some. Even after the book, I've I've heard of some better alternatives for spandex and things like that. Like what? The silk? Uh, yeah, there's some silk, but there's also a company that's doing working with a lot of the brands right now called Kentra. So they're using, instead of uh, oil polymers or petroleum polymers, they're using sugar polymers to get the same sort of thing. Mm. Also, there's um, the elastic jeans... They're using different polymers to make those healthy that you can actually put the genes back in the earth and it will fertilize the next generation of cotton. Wow. So there is some great solutions. I would just say, hey, I, I mean, minimize your exposure. Like minim keep minimizing your exposure. Buy into your next generation of clothing that is going to be beneficial for you. And also put some pressure on the companies. Yeah. That's like what say, I was listen, say. you know, the Lululemons, the things like that. Like, hey, we love your brand. We love it. It's stylish. It's cool. It's whatever. I'm not even here to demonize them. Right. They're just doing what they're doing. Right. And so, so many companies are, we all need to work together. But as a populace, as the people listening today, write them a freaking email, you know, write them yeah. a DM, like, like maybe a hundred people. DM Lululemon after they hear this episode going, Hey, I, I almost, I don't know this. So don't quote me. I can almost guarantee because they've already been receiving pressure because the world is changing. I have to believe that more, more people care about what's in our stuff, right? They have probably started to move on trying to make better choices. They just haven't publicly said it because they don't want to undercut their existing business, selling yeah. business before they have a viable solution. So put pressure on them. 
Because we the people, man, and I don't mean that facetiously. I mean, we have over 7 billion of us. We have, we have more power than anything. And that's where my optimism comes in. Like I, I, I'm extremely optimistic because I'm finding solutions all the freaking time, every week. I know. Right? I'm finding incredible solutions for these things, and I get inspired. I got to do a TV show out of the whole damn thing. We get to find great people, highlight what they're doing, solve a problem, you know, better a situation. This is it. This is the spirit of being human. Yeah. Like, let's face the problems that we're like, okay, it's lazy. It's yeah. a lazy to make that out of oil. Or right? do, does it, is it not as effective? Like if you're using sugar as your elastic versus what is actually known to be really effective, is it just a, an inferior product? Well, you define inferior, but I will Inf say, I will say for sure, these, we've become really good at it. This is just a system that we created mm -hmm. over a long period of time. If every, if anyone a hundred years ago would have said you're making clothes out of oil, they would be like, why would you do that? Right. Right. But we did it. Right. So we're really good at it. And it's really good at its job. Plastic is really good at containing things. And, and it's cheap as hell to put it into clothing. It's cheap as hell to make water bottles mm -hmm. out of it. It's cheap as hell to form it into anything you want and put your food in it. It's easy to, as a takeaway, it's easy to use as a single use, like fork. Like it's easy, mm -hmm. it's true. okay, but come on, it gets it's now it's the bad version of circular economy. We're 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 doing these things. It's affecting you now, so it's affecting you now. You throw those away eventually. There is no away, Jennifer. There is no place this goes where it's away. There is no way to deal with it. So it gets buried, or it biodegrades after 500 to a thousand years it's in that process micro blasting the environment with plastics it's then neutering the 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 insects and the other animals it's now going back into the soil back into the water and then you know what shows up when you turn on your faucet your freaking yoga pants your your plastic water bottle that you threw away Meaning that yeah, we're no. just doing all this stuff. It's a circ It's a it's a cycle. I yeah, guess. it's a cycle that's not in our best interest. It's got a you know it's that bad bad commercial where we're saying hey you know we do this but then you have all these side effects. Every one of these fatal conveniences is a list of side effects that it has. Okay, cool. You can do whatever you want. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to convince them. I, it's not, I'm not here to convince everyone to do, you don't have to live my life. You don't have to do anything. But I want you to have some information. All I really want you to do is go, hey man, live your life the most extraordinary way possible. Live your dreams. Go for it. Let it rip. But just be aware that you're doing this and it's undercutting your life. And you can just do that. Right. So keep doing it because largely you're just life is built upon habits and we yes. have, you, you know, <laughs> and and if we're being undermined by our habits, you know what it affects our hustle, because if you're being hijacked by your the endocrine system all the time with all of these chemicals, which you are, every woman on average is exposed to 126 chemicals every day, just in her personal care world, right? 126, likely carcinogenic and mostly endocrine disrupting. How much can you hustle when you're all whacked out, when girls are being forced into premenopause, or excuse me, forced into uh, uh, that PMI or, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> menopause. No, no, no. W women get, getting into menopause, but, uh, girls getting into periods. Pre, oh, pre, menstrual. Pre, oh yeah. Pre, like pre, pre, pre menstrual. Well, that's true because all the hormones that are happening now, yeah. Yeah. people are getting their periods way younger exactly. and it keeps on cutting. Those are the false estrogens that bind to the receptors from all of these damn plastics. No, absolutely. And what I was going to also say was interesting 
is a long time ago, someone was crazy for saying that plastic was harmful, right? And now it's like a mainstream known piece of information that yeah. don't drink out of plastic or yeah. or he, pl plastic that's heated, you know, basically yeah. basically uh, goes base, goes right into your food and goes yeah. right into your systems. Yeah. But 20 years ago, people weren't talking about that. Just and so I think that, and, and even with met, uh, uh, with uh, makeup, right? Because yeah. now people are talking about parabens and all yeah. those things. Yeah. So a lot of the things that are in the book now that people are not aware of, that could, because it's not mainstream, will become mainstream in many years to come. Yeah. But so why wait and be aware of it now? Can you talk about one that is really surprising that people would never have thought of? That oh, is really disruptive, like a fatal convenience that's super disruptive that we would never have thought of. Well, I mean, the, the one that I said in the show, the, the, the talk that we did it always freaks people out is the, the dental floss. Yes. The dental floss is so wild because, I mean, what a perfect fatal convenience because it's a convenience of that, you know, when they developed instead of just a string, they developed a thin film and then they put some slippery substance on it and then it goes, oh wow, I don't have bleeding gums and I can slide this right in between. How great is that? I now have a somewhat enjoyable experiment experience as I floss my teeth. Yeah. Guess what's on that? PFAS, right? Mm -hmm. So it's heat resistant, stain resistant, things don't stick to it and it slides easy. It's, like so the, tef, it's what Teflon is, yeah, right? Yeah, so it's a derivative. It's a basically the grandson of, of Teflon. So, But here's the thing. There's zero regulation. None. Because it's dental floss is deemed a, a medical device. So they don't have to disclose anything. Nothing. Wow. It's deemed a medical device? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and then this, that PFOS, that dental floss, there was a study showing that it was linked to kidney cancer directly. So, so in that, and so what are we doing? Right. And right. that it's so interesting because, um, you know, you think the, the FDA, the USDA, the FCC, the EPA, you think someone's like, you can't possibly just throw these products out there. If That's they're dangerous, right. right? You just can't possibly. There's no way. There's no way. You can hear the older generation going, there's no way, right? But, <laughs> but the truth is that's absolutely the opposite. And in terms of this PFOS thing, which is finally starting to get, maybe because I'm staring at it every day and aware of this, but you know, uh, it's starting to get called out. Um, Coca-Cola got caught after my book was done. They, they had a, I think it was called Simply Orange product in plastic, of course. Which one? And, not Fatal, the Super Life? Or no, no, book? no, this book. So Coca-Cola was called out? No, no, no. So I was doing this book. Yeah. After I was finished with the book, I saw that Coca-Cola oh, okay. had uh, uh, their, their product Simply Orange, which was some sort of fake orange juice, mm -hmm. had over 200 different PFAS chemicals in the orange juice being sold every day. And they finally were, someone tested it and called them out and all that stuff. So it's like some citizen or some third party NGO tested it, which, you know, listen, I call out a lot of great stuff the Environmental Working Group does. They do a lot of investigative stuff to try to, because again, they're filling the gaps. We are filling the gaps of the regulatory bodies mm -hmm. that have, unfortunately been lobbied into oblivion and doesn't have our best interest. So, you know, in terms of the PFAS, all of this attention is starting to get. So then they enact by the government, the, the toxic standard control act, which is now given the ability to regulate PFAS. And you're like, wait a minute, but you already had, a regulated body, you, you, the EPA or the wow. FDA. But since there's pressure, now they enact another one and then companies come out and say, yep, we're gonna eliminate you know, PFAS from our wrappers because they wrap 
food with PFAS so shit doesn't stick to it. So people eating ultra processed takeaway food, that's also wrapped in PFAS. Like fast wrappers. food. Yeah. yeah. So fast so, food is wrapped in, in PFAS wrappers. What else would be wrapped in that? Gum wrappers, I would imagine. Yeah, too. yeah. Anything that, uh, uh, you know, energy bars, like oh, yeah. the, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Things like you would never think about. Yeah, and so PFOS is in and that. protein bars. And mascara that doesn't wipe off, lipstick that doesn't wipe off, blush that doesn't wipe off, um, leather products that don't stain, carpets that are wrinkle or like stain-free, clothing that is wrinkle-free. All of that is a sign to run the other way because that's usually just a PFOS a chemical. It's not on the back of the label. It's not on the back of the product. It's a chemical inside and it's not disclosed. So how did you figure this all out? There must've been a, how long did it take you to write the book and how long, yeah. And how did you figure this all out? Because if people are hiding this information, how were you able to, uh, unclose it? Like, well, you, you, or disclose uh, again, it, there's or a lot of, it? there's a lot of great companies doing it. There's a campaign for safe cosmetics. Mm -hmm. They're doing great work, environmental working group, clearly. Uh, and then all you have to do is Google search, Google searching. I mean, but then what, I, where I really would find the good research and the good information, mm -hmm. because like you said, the algorithms don't necessarily pop up with like, it's killing you. Yeah. Um, so I'd read good books, right? So good bo books of people really dedicated to this stuff. Then you would like, Oh wow. Like, um, Dr. Leo uh, Trisande wrote a great book on, uh, endocrine disruptors sicker, fatter, poorer. That's an incredible book. And he was standing on the shoulder of his, of his giants. So he's a medical doctor, uh, um, that wow. was dedicated to this and then his colleagues. So then I read that thing and then going, Holy shit. And then you're finding out all of his cited yeah. research and then you're digging into that. And so it becomes, then you start finding the portals. You start finding these things. And plus, I had over 20 researchers, Jennifer. There's no way. And this, so this particular, at least two and a half years, being exposed to this originally yeah. has been 30 from my father being I know. one of the first Can ones. Can you talk about your father? Because you brought him up a few times and just explain yeah. to, to people a little bit like what happened to your father. Yeah, yeah. So um, my dad was a high-functioning uh, guy. He was a professor at the University of Minnesota. He then got another uh, another master's and became a counselor at the University of Minnesota. And in that process, in that tra transition, I think he was there for a year or two or maybe more. I don't remember because I was off at college. Um, he started to get fogged out in his brain. He was a high-functioning guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, academic researcher but a huge heart and uh then he would start discovering these headaches and couldn't think couldn't sleep uh very uncomfortable and so he'd go to a bunch of doctors and finally uh, a few doctors put it together he goes you you might have and this process of process of elimination too they were like you might have what's called emerging condition called chemical sensitivity so he started eliminating uh, fragrances, colognes, uh, shampoos, conditioners, uh, off-gassing of azo dyes from colored shirts, whatever it was, right? His environment. He neutered his environment from smelly stuff, chemical smelly stuff. And came to find out like he started to feel better, but then he had to force retirement because he couldn't educate his high, entire wing of his university. So he literally had to retire under a disability. Um, wow. And this spiraled him a bit. And he was loved people. He loved to help. And then he would have to distance himself. So early on in college, in order to go back home and see my father, he would send me a care package of the right deodorant to use, shampoo to use, unscented, laundry detergent, all of that stuff. Because if I was going to be around him, I couldn't have any of that on. What would happen to him besides fogginess if he was yeah, around He couldn't it? function. He couldn't function. He couldn't sleep. He was, the, think of it like, you know, have you ever seen anyone with a migraine? Mm -hmm. It's kind of looking like that. You just like, you're just out of it. Just out. 
and, and, and it took him so long to recover. So if he smelled something in any place, he would immediately leave, like sprint out of there wow. because he knew if he got affected, his body to process that and to get it out took a very long time. So then uh, that forced his retirement. He was, you know, slightly depressed, probably very depressed. Mm -hmm. He was 30 years sober. He started drinking again after that. And it probably all the pressures of, of whatever was happening. I think it was very linked, though, to um, this debilitating thing and him being isolated from the world, essentially. And then he picked up, you know, he couldn't get sober again after 30 years of sobriety and ended up dying of alcoholism. And so there's a chapter dedicated to him. And, you know, again, one of the caveats here is it was set up because he was also, he didn't have a thyroid anymore because he was um, part of the Navy that dealt with atomic bombs during the Cuban Missile Crisis called the Keepers of the Dragon. And uh, so they also <laughs> didn't use a lot of precaution when you're playing with an atomic bomb. And so his thyroid got wiped out. Wow. Yeah. So when this didn't happen until you were how old? Um, I was in college. Right. So you so weren't like living 20. in college. Yeah. Right. So um, when, but when you did see him, you had to like do all, the, all those precautionary yeah. things. How much of it did you think was psychosomatic, mental versus... Originally, I thought it was all psychosomatic. Right. Because if you're hearing that for the very first time, you're going, what are you talking about? Right. Or like, why you? I've never seen anyone, right? And it, clearly, he was compromised because his, his, one of his master glands, his thyroid, was already compromised. Right. So his immune system plus... He'd been an alcoholic, and his liver uh, in processing things was very uh, low as well. So, um, was he an alcoholic when you were little, or he got it? sober when I was four? Yeah. Okay, so you don't even remember him being no an alcoholic, other than him giving me the scar on my yeah. Chin. I see it from what? What did he do? He didn't didn't mean to. He was just drunk. So I was sitting on the stoop in from the house into the garage, and he slammed the door. And he didn't know I was there. And it threw me into his sea of beer bottles, ironically. And they smashed open and sliced my chin. <gasps> and it was hanging there. So, yeah. that was. But that was, you know, the catalyst for him to get sober. At least the final catalyst. Wow. Yeah. So, other than that, though... He what like, like the relationship between you and your father was okay growing up because he wasn't an alcoholic. Yet. He was angry. He never dealt with any of the emotions, so he was like what they call a dry drunk. He was very hard, with disciplinary. It's a someone that hasn't done with the emotions. So he's as he's just angry, hasn't done dealt with himself, and, and he's just uh, judgmental and intense and yelling and screaming. And that was most of my life my my father and 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 then as i kind of matured uh we got closer you know after he divorced my mom and then i really started to understand him when i was in my 20s and 30s and 40s kind of 40s yeah um but he passed 23 years ago yeah but he was an ex exceptional dude like amazing guy yeah wow yeah and so then you believe then it was after you, after you got over the whole, like, I thought, I think he was crazy, that it was all actually true physical. It wasn't a mental yeah. health issue 100%. as well. Because I had talked to his doctors too. Because at that point, they, they, you know, a few of them, one that diagnosed it had, had been dealing with a few people because he was up in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. So there was more population yeah. that was starting to pop up, you know. What would be some of the symptoms that people would notice um, from maybe doing all these fatal conveniences that were they're not aware of it's, if it's not full blown, right? It's tricky. It's tricky because you, you, you can't identify it. You can't identify like cute. You can't pain. say this is happening because <laughs> but, of this. But it can show up as, uh, why do I have endometriosis? Clean up my environment. Why don't I have the energy that I want? Why am I not losing the weight? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, how come I'm getting sick all the time? How, how come I can't, 
heal fast enough, like these kinds of things, and you're not optimal. That's what I mean. Like when I wrote Super Life, obviously completely dedicated on eat the best foods ever, mm-hmm. right? Get hydrated, eat your plants, eat fresh, all of that stuff, and, you know, and increase your microbiome, all that stuff. But if we're not dealing with this invisible, stressed out, polluted world, mm-hmm. then it, it, they go together. Right. Right. right? right. So, so that was all the reason. It's like, like working out, but eating, eating French fries yeah. and McDonald's right. every day. With right. The, the old school way was like, well, I burned 700 calories. So I'm going to eat this donut that's 600 yeah. and I'm still good. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. <laughs> exactly. And a milkshake, you know, to wash it down. <laughs> So it's exactly it. Like it's, it's basically, so at the end of the day, it's about, you know, if you, if someone might be having a health concern or issue and they're not even putting two and two together because they yeah. don't know what they don't know. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that the, the, the idea is to learn, like you can open up, this is a resource book. Yeah. I like that. Idea. You, know? yeah, exactly. you, you can open it up eat, and just read one page. You're going to learn something. Every page you can learn something. Yeah. It's like, this is what I like about this book. It's like very, it's every page. It's like fatal conveniences, Wi-Fi and routers. Yeah. You know, like things that people don't even think about would be something. And you're going to get those people going, oh, come on, they're safe. Okay. <laughs> then, then you can believe that all you want. Exactly. Your biology, your chemistry, your body has to deal with your insane point of view that you haven't looked at. Like, don't, don't throw out all this stuff if you haven't looked at this stuff, right? Yeah, at least, like, at least, at least be, at least kind of make sure that you have the knowledge and then you can make a decision. Yeah, then, it, if, then you can decide to put those earbuds in your mouth, in your, in your, in your mouth, mouth. <laughs> in your, in your ear. You can decide, you can, hey, like, duct tape the damn cell phone up to your head if you think exactly. that these are safe. <laughs> exactly. Like, like go, again, it's not my job. Like, I, I, I dug into this stuff, I used, 20 researchers these are my conclusions uh not really conclusions these are most of them i lead with like questions does this sound healthy to you right exactly. does this does this is this something that you feel so good that you're 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 okay with using it this way what i really want is people to a- enact these solutions so that they can like just celebrate things that are life-giving that are not like detrimental one hundred percent. You know. Do you? What do you believe? Um, I mean, I, I just like as I, as you were talking, I'm just like kind of going through the book again, and you say anti aging creams. It's like you, you call out anti aging creams, yeah. not just cream. What's in anti aging cream that would be a fatal convenience that maybe we're not aware of that would be different than let's say and well, like it's, something it's, else that's it's, a paraben or it's more of a concentration of more of the the things. So like. The, you know, number one, it's greenwashing. Mm. It's, it's not true. There's no anti-aging cream, right? You know, if, okay, if you get, if you get into, um, you know, peptides or something, that, that's a whole nother thing. That's not right. what I'm talking about. Some lotion that's saying, hey, we're going to base, it's basically as good as a facelift. And they're blasting you with parabens and phthalates and false claims that they really don't have to uh, uh, substantiate. Mm -hmm. Um, So the intensity around that is really why I called. That was a good example of just a a blatant greenwash, toxic annihilation of of taking advantage of people because it's just a higher version of harsh chemicals. Think of... Uh, think of things going on in your skin as food and as nutrition, right? We're thinking of it as like trying to, you know, uh, you know, be miraculous with chemicals. No, feed it with nutrition. Uh, my good friend, Ben Fuchs is a pharmacist I've known for 25 years out of Boulder, Colorado. He has this incredible, um, uh, skin nutrition line called truth treatments and his vitamin C serum is 78% vitamin C, like not 2%, not 0.2%, like all this other Mm -hmm. crap. Like, like he uses real stuff. Um, so that's called his line truth treatments. Can I have some? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I just I just talked to him and I, he just gave me I just received his stuff I've again I've known him but I didn't know he was going down this doing do uh, he's been creating skin stuff for as long as I've known him and by the way let me tell you Darren would not be talking about this or promoting it uh for money, it's because he honestly yeah. believes in it. Like I, I promise you, this is not just him like spewing stuff because of, a, a, of like a sponsorship deal. Like Darren is the antithesis opposite of that. Yeah. Just FYI, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna promote my book. I'm gonna promote my barucas. Yes. Like I'm gonna well, promote of things. Of course, I mean that's like goes without that, saying. Things that I. That but I, you actually genuinely yeah, yeah. do, and be, you would never promote anything unless you genuinely, genuinely believe it and do it yourself. I tur- I it, it makes. Melissa, my CEO, crazy. I know we talk crazy. about this all the She's time. Like, oh, we were, were very close, but then all of a sudden, I saw all these plastics in this uh, plant-based uh, meal program. That uh, was like incredible thing. I know incredible. It's, one, it's, it's a. I'm not going to say it. Don't worry, yeah. Darren. But it's a very well-known uh, food company yeah, that I everyone like, I loves. Can't, I can't do it. And like it's Darren a, would not promote it. I can't it. do it. You, you send me this stuff and it's got, okay, it's recycled plastic, but I can't do it. I, I don't want my food touching plastic. By the way, I, I feel for Melissa when I work <laughs> with Darren. Um, this happened with me and you all the time because Darren would be a gazillionaire if he allowed it to happen, but he will not because he has no, too much integrity. There's no way. Way too much integrity. And so you turn down that food company. Yeah, unless they're going to help me change. And they won't. The, unless they are going to help let me help them change their packaging, which I can because I know big companies doing great stuff. Yeah, but, they but there's also it? other ones doing in the state of California. We just found out one's doing glass. They're sending meals around in glass. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. But it's so, very expensive. It's very expensive. Exactly. But, That's so, what I'm saying. Some of these things are quite expensive and it's, and you some know. Of us, yeah, it's like if you can afford it, great. But at the end of the day, here's what I think about food. Plant some damn seeds. Put some seeds in the ground. Grow some stuff. Stop watering your lawn. Take half of it and grow food. Like, this is how we founded the America. This is how we can create food security. Like, let's do that. So we don't have to buy. So I don't have to spend $1,000 a month having people send me food. Again, I'm not knocking it because if it's, it is convenient. It's convenient as hell. When those foods showed yeah. up, I was like, holy crap. That's so convenient. Yeah. Right? Of course. Right. But it's like, let's just look at this honestly. Let's look at all of this stuff honestly and then make your choice. Right. And read a label. When you read labels, if it has too many things listed, chances are it's not good for you. Guaranteed. I mean, it's almost a hundred percent guarantee. If you're not looking for something, if you're not if you're not purposely looking for something that has, for example, you know, phthalate free, plastic free, paraben free, PFOS free. You know, uh, da, 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 da. BPA free, BPH free. If you're not consciously looking for it and the company's not shining it out in their marketing, then chances are you're sucking down some chemicals it, that you don't want. 100% <laughs> true. And then Darren has, I don't know if you guys, ever, well, Barucas. So Darren has this company that, he, I mean, have you guys, I don't know, there's a nut. It's called a Baruca nut. I mentioned it before because I eat them. They are Number one, they're delicious, but they are 25% more, well, there's more protein, yeah. less calories, yeah. uh, uh, more fiber, more nutrients, more period. nutrients, period, than any other nut in the entire world, better than an almond, better than a walnut, and they're called Barucas, and uh, Darren is the guy who started it, and what's happening with Barucas? Do you want to kind of tell people? Because they are delicious. That's great. We uh, have a new partner, uh, Steve Fabos, who's been a very good yes, friend for 15 wonderful. years. He's such a sweet soul, and I'm so grateful. We get to resurrect Barucas. It almost was going down. Um, what a shame. What a, that it was would tough. Be, it was tough. Yeah. It, yeah. So internal conflicts of partners and stuff, you know, um, no, one, no one fault. It just wasn't working. Chemistry, right? And so we're, we're now... Um, uh, got a new team and we just got some tests done. So we, we got a third party Swiss test by this company. We're one of the highest ecologically beneficial companies that they've tested so far. So it's literally good. We have a, one of our slogans is good for you and good for the planet. And we can validate that. Uh, it's, it's a wild food. There's no irrigation. 
So this is in the wild and we collect it in the Sahadu of the of Brazil and it's being threatened by be deforestation. So us uh, creating value in these trees again over the deforestation of them and for the indigenous people fairly um, is super protective of, of, a, of a biome that is intimately connected to the Amazon, of the health of the Amazon too. So they're very connected. Um, and so... And then on top of it, they taste amazing and the nutrient value per calorie blows everything away. Mm -hmm. It just checks all the boxes of, of really wanting to, to make a change through conscious consumerism and get a great product out to people. Um, yeah, super stoked. Because Darren, you know, I, I, it's in the bio, I, I, in the intro, but Darren um, is t is technically the one and only superfood hunter. So he hunts the best of the best superfoods around the world and brings it to, I guess, mainstream. He was, uh, you know, obviously he had the show Down to Earth with Zac Efron on Netflix. Uh, and Shakeology. And Shake, uh, of course. And, and he developed by the way, I've Shakeology. Got a I got a bunch of Shakeology for you. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. Did you bring the chocolate by a chance? I've got it all. <gasps> I've been yeah. like, so thank God, so I have, thank God I have you as a friend. You keep me like, you keep and me people healthy. don't realize that I've been drinking that, that creation for six, you know, since 2006. Like, so he developed Shakeology, you guys, for, for Beachbody, which is truly, it's a $4 billion. Uh, well, it's done over $4 billion yeah, it's since, done over since, $4 billion. since 2008 when it finally launched. It's their most, it's Beachbody's most successful product. It's not P90X. It's not insanity for those of you who want who know what Beachbody is. It is Shakeology. That's kept the lights on, basically. Well, I don't. I'm not going to say that. I, but, I'm telling you. I but mean, it's a it's a it's a team. Like you know, Carl Deichler, love him. Isabel Deichler couldn't have done it without her. They allowed this crazy guy running around the world finding stuff and and enough of the vision coming together with Isabel to be able to go. Hey, we can we can do something that no one's doing. Yeah. We can we can Delicious too. like crank and it took by the way just to create clean um, clean flavors you have to go to the flavor houses and specifically ask for for natural ingredients how they're going to do it so we had to align because natural flavors they still allow things that you don't want in your product mm. so we set new standards we we have um, people don't know that no they don't yeah. they, they don't know the standards and then people steal our formula and and create a cheaper product all the time and the millions and millions and millions of dollars the over 1500 different tests per batch so we test everything right it's amazing and make sure that the compounds are in there make sure that we don't have contaminations of of foreign even now after, oh, all, my, after all these years later of course this is like and we're still listen i still have meetings do you I, really I, I literally have one after this podcast seriously yeah, yeah of course all the time I we're love that. we're always in in reinventing the formula it's just a big ship to change so some of the formula uh, upgrades we're creating for next year, we've been dialing it in for three. Really? To implement it is just, it takes a bit. Well, I was going to ask you, I, so, I, was, saying, I was actually going to, I was asking this offline. I don't know if people care or not, but what is the benefit of having that stuff, the Shakeology stuff versus just like a chocolate, because I, I really like the chocolate Shakeology yeah. versus like just a chocolate protein powder. Well, it's, I mean, is of course just, we have protein in there. But, right, but it's a superfood more than anything, yeah, right? Yeah, we have, we have, you know, a, an array of some of the greatest <laughs> uh, adaptogens ever. So we looked at, you know, I looked at it, Isabel looked at it from what are people missing? Right. What are the gaps that people are missing? So tons of superfruits, uh, adaptogenic herbs, uh, maitake, shaitake, uh, chaga, uh, Shazandra, Ashwagandha, Astragalus, you like all that stuff. Cause you're going like, you know, it's 2006, you're going, oh, we're all stressed out. Let's, let's bring in adaptogenic qualities into the formula to help bodies deal with stress. And so then you bring in all these other whole fruits and high vitamin C's and from Camu Camu, et cetera, uh, to, to increase the fortification of natural whole foods. 
Um, and then you've got prebiotics, probiotics, enzymes, like the whole thing. So it's, 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 it's one spoke in the wheel mm -hmm. is protein. Uh, Which is so interesting. So that means when people like, do you, not have, do you not have to add other things to it? Like, you know how people take make a shake and they add like so many different things. Well, you they can add, add whatever like, you want to it. It makes no, it. I don't, mean the, I don't mean by the berries or the bananas or the, I'm talking like they add like the uh, spirulina, the chlorophyll, the cre whatever they're adding to well, it. I mean, it, it, BCAAs. Or, you, you can add whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't, stuff. it doesn't matter, but we made it from a super nutrient dense yeah. snack. Easy to do. Easy it's to delicious. Yeah. It's a, it's a dessert. It's a freaking, it's so good. It's a dessert. It is. It's it's so a, I don't use it as a dessert, but it could be. Yeah. I mean, it's smoothie delicious. bowls and all kinds of stuff. So it's, yeah, it's. That's just like a whole other It's tangent. still a standard of mine. You know, I still, every For day. For real it is. Every day. Exactly. Can you go through your habits that you do every day to be as healthy and as fatally inconvenient? You got to get that in, don't you? you yeah. It, you well, no, it. I don't have to, but look at you. He is, uh, he is literally a walking health. Like you, you like, like I said, you practice what you preach and I want you people to know what so you're you. daily. Yes. But you really, like you do it to like the next level. Like I, 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 I make, I mess up a lot. Darren goes to bed like at seven o'clock. Oh, I can't I call Darren after seven fifteen cause he's in bed. <laughs> That's you I are. may be laying down, but I <laughs> go to sleep at probably eight thirty. Eight thirty. Okay. So what time do you wake up? Four. Okay. And then what do you do at four? Run down your routine in the next 30 seconds. Uh, I make my water. I get my RO water. I put my salts in. I vortex it. That's I, in the first episode with me and Darren, by I, the way. I, I, I turn on my... I'll link to it. I turn on my Therasage infrared pad. You got to get one of these things. Holy cow. Is this it thing that good? is so next level. I've been using their infrared pad. Uh, pad for seven years. Now they just made a red light uh, grounding technology tens unit that you can plug in on specific muscles. It's like it's just ridiculous. So good. And you're lying on that every yeah, day. Yeah. So so that's where okay. I do my meditation. So I warm that up. I do my and then I create my shake, mm -hmm. right? And so then I I. What do you put in your shake? Uh, of course, Shakeology. Yeah. Maybe some spirulina, chia seeds, um, and then handfuls of berries and goji berries and bananas and stuff like that. They're pretty simple in the beginning because then I eat a whole nother smoothie bowl uh, after my workout, yes. right? So, um, so yeah, then I go on the pad, um, do a meditation, do some journaling, and then, and then I'm taking the dogs for their first run and then I eventually I drink the the first go around and I eventually then go to a workout, come back, eat again. What kind of and workouts do you do? Besides push rocks, literally. Push, pull, scream. Yeah? How long do yeah. you scream and push and pull for? Uh, it can be thirty minutes to forty five minutes okay. usually. What kind yeah. of workouts are you doing? Like more like resistant training? Push Oh and resistance, yeah. yeah. Sprinting, pulling screaming to failure i'm in, a, in this mode of just doing everything to failure are you using equipment though now or are you just using the rocks and the tree for pull no no, no i have all i have a bunch of the rogue stuff I that know, i ordered I'm, I'm kidding. right and i go to john mcginley's house and we have a whole bunch of stuff there and then on saturdays i've been you should come on saturdays we're hitting the beach in malibu and i have a bunch of people showing up for that really so we're pulling pulling heavy weights on the sand, doing sprints, doing body weight stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come. Invite yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. Next Saturday. Okay. Maybe next time. 830. No, 830. That's right. 830. I'm going to try to make that one. Uh, Darren's book is called Fatal Conveniences. It is wonderful. And like I said, and he said, you can use it as a resource book. It could be on the coffee table. It doesn't have to be read all in one shot. It is filled with extraordinary information that can truly like save your life. Mm. If, uh, you actually listen, it really definitely can enhance. It can definitely enhance your life. And, um, it's, it's wonderfully, wonderfully done. You can see how much research and time has went into it. 
And like you said, it's just making these little small tweaks and changes to your life. Um, it doesn't have to be extreme, but even changing something, even, you know, one habit a day can make such a huge difference in your overall optimization of your health, your overall like life. Um, highly recommend. And I'm not just saying that because I'm I'm close friends with Darren. Darren, what else uh, is, is going on or what else do you want to tell people besides to try Baruchas? They're delicious. And Working on a new brand new TV show. I can't really say anything I, that's why I didn't more bring about it, up. it but I but but I am. Uh, actually you'll appreciate this. My new co star, which I can't I was trying to get Clarence to say oh, it before. Because I, I wanted to mention it so badly. But my new co-star apparently said it on a on an interview. <gasps> then why can't you but, say it? But they, uh, I'm getting word on it, but that was edited out for the airing of the episode just because they need to condense it. But their team said, yeah, Jason already mentioned it. So. Can I mention it now? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't have Clarence yet. Okay, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to say it. Don't worry. But I will say. But it's based in. I've been just... begging Darren to go to any production meeting for the last four months. Begging. Yeah, begging yeah. Darren to go to any most, meeting. W- most women are going to love. No, my, you don't even, even know. Even though they love the first co-host. Is no, that... no, no. This is like, this is, that, that's child's play compared to the next one. You guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> You don't even know, okay? I've been I've been sitting here being like, why can't I say this? But I'm not, and I still beg you if I can go to any of the next production meetings ever. Well, he's he's not here, so he will eventually be here. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. We're because I have to go to him. I'll go. <laughs> it's I'm, a long way. I don't away. mind. It's a long way. I don't away. mind. I'll be your companion. Anyway, so so, but it's based in problem solution orientation as it relates to the environment. So we're digging into a lot of really cool things that are going on in the world uh, and finding solutions and finding advocates for change and stuff. So um, that I'm really excited about for sure. And I'm hinting at uh, really looking into a because of this book a potential for. A, a clean marketplace, a vetted marketplace, a verified marketplace, so that if you go into it, you know these things are really taken care of instead of thinking they are and they're not. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's, it's a big undertaking, but I'm strongly considering it. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been great. Thanks, Kevin. Of course. Bye, everybody. I love that. Okay, hold on. I'm going to take another. Oh, my God. Okay.